Probably the other big win that we've learnt with this second phase of campaigning is around building integration with all of the agencies in town. Uh, work with Town Centre Taupo, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, and of course our, our operators in industry. And that's been a really big win, I think, for getting the hub concept going and getting a lot of people on board, working with Enterprise Great Lake Taupo and others. In terms of operator satisfaction, we did carry out, in, in accordance with our um, annual plan requirements, we carried out a satisfaction survey. We were aiming for 70% satisfaction in this year. Uh, we ended up with 64% in the satisfied or very satisfied camp. Most of that, I think it was 61% were in the satisfied category for in terms of our domestic and international marketing. So I, I think that is a good result. And uh, as I say, we, we know we can do better. But uh, I am pleased that uh, the work we're doing is being recognised out there. You'll see the second uh, bullet there, 54% in terms of website and online marketing satisfaction. So we've obviously got some work to do there. Uh, we recognise that the changeover with the site and some of that uh, performance in the first six months uh, wasn't as good as we wanted. And uh, so we've just taken on board a, a new digital executive. Uh, that's a full-time appointment. And uh, I think you'll really see some, some big growth over the next 12 months. The other one there is 61% satisfied with industry engagement. That's a big focus in the year ahead. Uh, and I'm pleased to say that <clears throat> I, I think you know the number of focus groups have had, the extra opportunities for people to come and join us, uh, either at the board meetings or other forums, has definitely grown. Uh, we're also trying to get ourselves out there a lot more. Just in terms of eyesight, this is an area that uh, we have tried to grow the amount of integration between the marketing team and the, the eyesight staff. Uh, they have had some challenges this year. We've seen a 9% drop off in foot traffic through the door. But I'm pleased to say the, uh, the teams have worked hard with what they've been given in terms of numbers and we've managed to get a 4.5% uh, revenue growth across the uh, in commission sales. So that is an excellent result. Uh, and that also includes uh, revenue from retail sales as well. Just in terms of Rugby World Cup, it's obviously uh, very topical at the moment. I just wanted to sort of list out there some of the key things we've been involved with. The active traveller focus has been a big part of our overall strategy that's you know, pushing ahead into the new business plan. But that's very much about making sure that the gateways into that people take into our destination, particularly in the North Island, so through the major airports, through the major road networks uh, and major centres, that, that our profile is as high as it can be given our budget. And that's been a big push. And as, so I've just listed there some of the activities we've been involved with. Things like radio tourism, uh, I've had some very good reports from a couple of people that have been travelling around the country in camper vans and have been picking up on those uh, those advertising prompts as they go through different regions that promote Topol and the, the district. So looking ahead to next year, I think it's always good to finish and say where we're going. Uh, three big strategies or the three big objectives are to build a stronger tourism economy to increase our stakeholder engagement and participation and also to develop a more effective eyesight network. So it's a case of our financial years don't always fit in, into the, the, mar the marketing financial year doesn't always fit into the, the council financial year, so to speak. Uh, these things <coughs> are fairly fluid and I'm pleased to say that, you know, over the last six months we've already started to implement some of these major objectives and we've got some pretty strong KPIs to keep us honest over the next 12 months in these areas. So, happy to take any questions. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, yeah. Michelle. Councillor Craig. Um, a lot of us attended meetings in the setup of the Central Park Municipal Police Division all over Is this uh, sort of operation still alive? Yeah, that's a good, good question. Uh, we've basically, as an organisation, we chose to step down from Central Park over the last, the previous 12 months. Uh, there's a number of reasons for that decision, but one was particularly around Tourism New Zealand's stance towards that, uh, that campaign. Uh, it was also around the timing of the Tourism New Zealand funding, and which meant that by the time they approved the funding, we were late getting into market, which basically meant that we would have been advertising at, at the wrong time of the year. So. What we've done this year is indicated to uh, 
Central Park, which is mainly being run out of Rotorua International Airport, that we've uh, allocated 25000 of funding to a joint venture initiative. Uh, I understand the Tourism Lake Topol Group is also looking to put in some money into the initiative, uh, probably about half of what we are. And I am talking to Rhys Arrowsmith from the airport about ways we can work with them, and I know that they are looking at a lot of niche activities like golf and cycling and fishing. And so we're certainly, uh, you know, we want to pick the campaign up and get it going again. I think it's fair to say that Central Park New Zealand isn't going to be seen as a major uh, brand in Australia, I think it's better to look at it as a joint venture marketing tool. So we'll use that medium to work with our other regions, Ruapehu uh, as well, to not only push winter, but also I hope push um, some activities around the other shoulder, shoulder seasons, so spring and, uh, and particularly autumn uh, coming into next year. Is that... Um, you talked about the hub concept, and I've been involved right at the early stage of bringing that together. Is it the board's wish to continue doing that with, as a collective? With, with regards to the campaign work well, no, that we've been doing, or just other. working with the others? Absolutely, yeah. yep. 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 So that's, yeah, that's we been see, a great success. Yeah, we see it as, I mean, it's, it's early days for us as a board. I know there's been a lot of operational um, cooperation, but as far as the boards go, um, you know, Sue's coming along to our, our board meeting on Thursday um, and some of those further opportunities are going to be discussed at that point. But, yeah, it is, it is certainly something that we want to flesh out a little bit more and, and work towards. We do have figures on revenue. Uh, there will be a full grab it report that will come out uh, when we launch our, our next campaign, which is the spring campaign. But uh, in terms of actual revenue on the site, we generated $16,000 of, of sales. Uh, what we're finding is that the trend is for visitors to come onto the site and not be confident to book on the site. They tend to go through to the operators and, and then book. But um, we do have some revenue indications from uh, some businesses in town. Uh, got one standing next to me which is good and uh, also you know, places like Plateau and others that have indicated that they have had uh, good sales growth through the grab it period. So because of the way that campaign set up as I understand it rather than get indications you would actually be able to measure that in almost dollar terms I would think, um, would you not? Yeah, there, there's a couple of different ways that bookings were able um, to be made because we obviously partnered with Grabber uh, Grab a yeah, grab a seat and um, grab one um, online. So, and those bookings go directly through to the operators. So then it's up to the operators to share that information with us as to how many sales they made on in their individual purchases. Using our business as an example, we um, went far beyond the the um, grab it kind of campaign with DGLT and actually went out on our own as well and partnered in behind what the activity that DGLT was doing. So we know that. You know, we got some sales direct in on that grab it deal um, that wouldn't have been seen by DGLT. So it's about having that, I guess, transparency between the businesses that participated. Um, there are also a lot of retailers in town who had daily deals that, you know, we're relying on them to feed that information back through to Tracy Lee to for us to be able to get that information. So it's not a pure, this is what's come through the site and booked and that's it. It's a lot bigger than that. Yeah, there will be some other figures coming on that then, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Second question related to... Um, how you measure satisfaction, whether it be industry satisfaction, the visitor market, there's a whole range of satisfaction measures in here. I was just, could you just explain what the methodology is, what's the sample size, how do you do that, how do we come up with those figures? Sure. Yeah. Basically we put the, uh, the survey went out to all our stakeholders, so you know, probably they're looking at 450 operators plus another 100 uh, representatives on our database that are from a whole range of stakeholder groups that we work with. Uh, we received a, well, the, the way that uh, we use, the methodology we use is a survey monkey. So we send, that's a, an online software program. So we basically send it out there and let everybody come on and uh, indicate the scores. And uh, that's then collated for us and presented back. We had 29 uh, responses this year. So it was, you know, disappointing in terms of the total response. But 
um, enough to give us an indication of uh, where we sit. And the visitor market? Um, that's the operators I gather, the visitor market, you survey that as well? Yeah. Um, that's the one that Sue did, the, the actual yeah. visitors to yeah. town. So you had 300 and we had 360 uh, uh, respondents, and we do that over uh, one each year. We do it once a year at the moment. It's uh, sort of with keeping within budget. Uh, that occurred in April, and uh, we've now done two years in a row. So basically that gives us a pretty good insight into what our, our major domestic and international markets are doing. We break that down into day trippers as well. Uh, we are doing some key market analysis, uh, but it's fair to say that we have to be a bit careful with some of that work because for some markets like, say, uh, Holland, we might get 15 respondents and we just have to be a bit careful to you know, generalise about that, that whole market. And how is that survey conducted over what time period? Is it like a day or is it a...? Uh, it's conducted over generally a five-day period. Yep. Uh, this year we did an extra survey period uh, for Mangakino and uh, that occurred through the Easter period, so next year we'll be aligning it all to, to within the same week. Well done, obviously. Um, just to do with the survey as well, yeah. though. Like, so, what, what sort of concerns were out there that have come back to you? Like, and you know, obviously, you can work on those yeah. concerns. Double yeah. prime question of the direction to go is from those concerns, or is it just let us know what the concerns are out there? Uh, there were some verbal uh, responses, which sort of got into a little bit more detail. I think the uh, convention bureau area was probably the major one that people were concerned. Uh, the the previous convention bureau manager uh, turned out to not be a good fit for the role and uh, that has set us back a few months. Uh, we've, you know, to be fair, we covered off most of our uh, central requirements, like going to uh, the meetings, trade show, and the explore trade shows, those sorts of things. But uh, the area that we really need to step up in is our sales activity uh, to the, the corporate markets in Wellington and Auckland. And uh, just to sort of give you an idea, we've commissioned uh, some consultants in Auckland to assist us with that at the moment while we're in transition. Uh, we've also just appointed our new... Convention Bureau Manager, and uh, her name's, uh, it's going to be a lady from the Hooker Prawn Park, so uh, Karen's going to be joining us, and uh, I think you know she is going to be a real asset to us. Uh, so Karen Rainbow, for those hopefully, I'm sure a lot of you will know her, but uh, Karen has extensive experience in the CNI market, and I, this sector's been, was very, uh, you know, adamant that we had to find someone that had the existing contacts and could come in and quickly pick things up. Yeah. Uh, probably the other area of, well, to be honest, most of the other areas uh, had been addressed through some of the work we did with TLT. Uh, I think you know we have had a request from operators to have high profile, high impact campaigns. And you'll see again going into our spring campaign, we're doing the same format as the Grab It campaign, not so much from a deal perspective because we will we just want to have one uh, deals and promotion based campaign each year and that'll be looking at next year in the May period but uh, this next spring campaign is going to be very much around still creating a high profile high awareness campaign but it'll be based on more uh, positive connections with our, our destination. Okay, well, thank you Scott and Michelle. I know it's been a trying 10 months, last 10 months for you with everything that's happened, the ETA recession and, and all the other um, things that have uh, occurred over the last few months, and I'm sure with the new bo the board that you've got and uh, the team that you've got, Scott, that I look forward to the next 12 months. I'm sure you're going to go leaps and bounds, um, especially with the communication that we now have with with yous, um and also the hub com concept. I'm I'm sure it's going to go great guns. So thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Can I someone move and second the resolution that the information be received from Destination Great Lake Topo and they be thanked for their presentation. Thanks, Councillor Kirk. And seconder. Thanks, Councillor Johnson. All those